I'm a big failure. I started Facebook, and it failed. Really? Well, sort of. When I was in college, I published a guidebook for guys that included the freshman pictures of girls from neighboring all-girls schools. Clearly, this was the first Facebook. Unfortunately, Al Gore hadn't invented the Internet yet, so my Facebook wasn't interactive. That made it less useful. And also right as who the girls are was about to get reviews and publicity, the 60s protests erupted, stealing all the attention. My Facebook got no publicity, and the book failed. Years later, Mark Zuckerberg tried again, improving in my idea, and now he has $40 billion, and I don't. But I tried again. I became a TV reporter, and that worked out. Turns out lots of successful people failed at first. Oprah Winfrey, Steve Jobs, the author of Dr. Seuss. Some argue that they were fueled by failure. And that's the title of a new book by Jeremy Bloom. Bloom's been a success. You were once an Olympic-level skier, and you played pro football for two NFL teams, yet you say you're fueled by failure? My biggest dream in sports was to win an Olympic gold medal. My dad is the biggest Olympic fan you can ever imagine. And when I was 10 years old, I would look over at him while I watched in the Olympics, and he'd be wiping the tears off his face when a U.S. athlete would, would win a gold medal. And I wanted so badly to give him that feeling. Um, and, and you were favored. Medal. I was the number one ranked skier in, in the world. I had dominated the sport the year before. I won more consecutive World Cups than anybody in, in the history of the sport. And uh, one inch was the difference. One inch in Torino, Italy, uh, was the difference between realizing that 23-year-old that dream for me and, and getting sixth place. Uh, that was my, my first experience uh, uh, f with major failure. And then you tried football and set some collegiate records, but the NCAA turned you down. The NCAA wouldn't allow me to, to take endorsement money from being an Olympic skier. And we use that money to pay for our expenses and traveling all over the world. So without it, it becomes very difficult. So after two years of, uh, of giving up you know, any endorsement opportunity, um, I was broke. And so if I wanted to go to my second Olympics, I, I had to start accepting endorsement money. And I did. And they um, declared me permanently ineligible. And I wasn't able to play my junior and senior seasons. Uh, pro football. You're only 5'9". I don't know how you became a wide receiver, <laughs> but you got drafted by the Eagles, then injured. That was gone. Signed with the Steelers. Injured again. Failure again. You know, it was a moment of inflection for me after the Steelers. I had an opportunity to go to my third NFL team in that many years. And most of my life, you know, I, I've looked at what I'm doing, and I would weigh the risks and rewards. And if the rewards outweighed the risks, I would continue on that journey. And, and that's how, you know, I think I was able to reach those, those two levels in, in athletics. But at that point, I said, you know what, it, it's time to move on. It's time to start new goals and, uh, and climb a new mountain. And that's what I did. In Fueled by Failure, you say there are bouncers and splatters. Explain. <laughs> Well, you know, there's two different types of behavior when you encounter adversity, and you can kind of splat and allow that moment to define you, and that weight of failure that we all feel um, can, can be insurmountable, and we can lose focus in our dreams. And there's bouncers who take a step back from the moment and don't allow whatever thing happened to define who they are and say, all right, well, I'm going to dissect this, this moment in my life. I'm going to extract the learnings from it, and I'm going to move on. And I'm going to move it on a thousand miles an hour in, in the next direction. And that, that's what I did in Trino. I gave myself 48 hours to deal with, with that Olympic defeat. And I said, I'm going to take this time. I'm going to dissect everything that happened. And after that 48 hour window, I'm moving on a thousand miles an hour um, to the NFL draft when I was drafted. And that, that helped give me the mental clarity to continue pursuing the big goals and dreams that I had. Otherwise, it would be you know, this weight of, of, of Torino on top of me, and I would say, all right, well, I'm, you know, on to the next thing. But, uh, you know, I th so I think it's really important that, that uh, we don't self-identify too much with th those moments of failures that everybody experiences. Yeah, well, you bounced on to some big business success, which we'll get to in a moment. But first, we, we ask our social media followers for their favorite examples of people who turn failure into success. On Facebook, Alan P. 
Heal said Michael Jordan cut from his school's basketball team as a seventh, eighth, and ninth grader before becoming a superstar. John Hyatt pointed out that the Beatles failed their audition for Decca Records. We know what happened after that. And Mark Rush wrote that Post-it notes happened because of a failure. The company was trying to come up with a super glow, glue. Uh, since then, that failure has made them billions of dollars on, on these things. So you're just one of many examples. That's why I wanted to write the book. Uh, because my entire athletic career, I, I heard the cliches, I heard the stories, but there was no depth to them. There was no outlet to say, okay, well, why? You know, we, we hear failure makes you stronger, adversity makes you have character. Okay, I, I get that, but why is that? And why did my, Michael Jordan continue playing basketball after he was cut in, in, in high school? And as I was raising venture capital for the tech company I run today, I got a hundred no's before I got a yes. Well, let, let's, before we get to that, look at some of your other career achievements. You tried modeling, you did that for a while. It looks good there. Then he tried a reality dating show. <laughs> but those were just experiments because now he's really succeeded by starting a company that Forbes magazine calls the leader in marketing integration, whatever that means. Integrate's marketing software transforms the way you execute outbound demand generation. The Integrate platform lets you manage the entire life cycle of demand gen campaigns from a single dashboard. All right, Jeremy, I still don't know what that means, but you're making money. So to put it in consumer terms, we've all downloaded something online or signed up for something where we put our inaccurate information in, wrong email address or whatever, because we don't want to be remarketed to. Well, Turns out that's a really big problem for big marketing enterprise companies like Dell, HP, Cisco, because that data clogs up their system. And so we develop software to eliminate those bad and inaccurate leads so that their sales team can focus on the leads that, that matter. So we integrate that on the front door and on the back end of our software, we orchestrate the various disparate marketing systems like CRM, marketing automation, um, to make it to, all so right, that it can I all guess make sense. This is just too inside the tech weeds, but uh, Forbes <laughs> calls you a really fast growing com company. You have failed and succeeded in inspiring ways. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, John. So many successful people fail.